All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Uh, today we're going to be painting a scene from Yviv, Ukraine. I'm going to put the subject photo briefly up here on the screen so you can take a look. I've already got a, a sketch going down here. A um, couple of things to note. You'll notice that we only have three figures in here, and that's because we're going to do a lot of abstract here in the foreground to kind of fill in uh, or give the illusion of detail. I think it's really hard if you try to sketch all that stuff out. So we've just got our three main figures, some umbrellas. I've got some scribbles here to represent a tree. Um, but yeah, we're going to get started. So first off, let's go ahead and get our paper wet just a little bit, especially up towards the sky. All right. And you'll notice too, my palette's pretty dirty. I almost never clean it. I think it kind of helps keep uh, neutralized colors. All right, let's just get everything kind of wet and ready to go. All right, so I'm just going to start off with some kind of dirty water here at the top. I want to keep the sky pretty light. It's pretty warm, so let's kind of cool that off. This is some cobalt blue. Let's see. That's better. Ooh, it's maybe a bit too blue. Let's bring it down here. That's better. All right, let's see how that looks. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, and I'm just going to work my way down here. And this is pretty watery. I want to keep this sky pretty light. And I'm going to come back later and maybe do some kind of cloud work in there. All right, but that's a pretty good, cool-ish pale sky. I like that, but I'm going to add a little bit more. We've got some more of that blue up here, and this is just some more pigment-heavy water. I want to add that towards the bottom to kind of give that appearance of, of atmosphere. Yeah, and you'll hardly even notice that, to be honest. That's still going to be too light, uh, but let's just go ahead and come through here. This is this first wash is going to be almost all one color. I'm going to come back and work on that sky in just a second. Um, yeah, all that's fine. I am going to keep the ground a little bit warmer, though. So let's just come through here, and then I'm going to start kind of getting pretty warm down here at the bottom. But I want to come back and deal with this sky a little bit. I want to add some pigment to this lower area. And I'm going to pull some lavender. I'm just kind of dipping in my blues at the moment. This is cobalt, cerulean, and lavender. Let's go down here, pick up some dirty water. And let's just kind of add that down there. And again, it may look strong now, but when this thing dries, you'll hardly notice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let that kind of fade down. All right, let's do our foreground. All right, let's keep it pretty warm. I don't want to go crazy, but let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And that coolness from the buildings and sky is going to bleed down anyway. So. And all I'm really thinking about here is as I get closer to the bottom, I'm going to want to darken it up just like we did with the sky. I want to add more pigment. I'm going to come and touch up here. These are two grays I have from Daniel Smith. This is going to be Joseph Z's neutral gray, and that's Joseph Z's warm gray. And I'm going to just slowly add a little bit more pigment in there. And then you'll notice me kind of dipping around down here. This is burnt umber, burnt sienna light, and yellow ochre right there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And you know what? I'm looking at our sky. That really didn't get dark enough, but it's kind of too late. If I go back up there and try to work that in, I'm going to get some hard edges. So if watercolor is tricky, if you don't end up with exactly what you want, don't try to go back and save it and work it. Just leave it alone, move along, and... Everything will be just fine. So we're going to leave that alone, and then I'm going to work on getting darker down here at the bottom. All right. I'm going to really darken it up, get it pretty warm. Yeah, there we go. And I'm just pulling dirty water from down here in this bottom area. Yeah. That looks pretty good. Okay. Now things to think about. Before I come back and start working everything again, I'm going to let this completely dry. But a couple of notes, things where I want to have sort of negative space or I want to paint around them. 
These umbrellas I'm going to definitely not touch as I work on this building here. Uh, these two buildings are going to be off in the distance. They're going to be lighter, so I need to kind of keep that in mind. But these two are going to be closer. So I'll probably have these two a similar value, these two a similar value. These just need to be darker than those. And then up here in front, I'll talk about it more as I get down to the bottom when I'm finishing up this upper area. But we're going to try to abstract in a lot of detail. I think that's that's a kind of a secret to painting uh, cityscapes is there's so much going on. If you try to draw and paint all that, it's it just it won't really work out. You got to kind of let watercolor decide what it's going to do. So anyways, I'll be right back. We're going to let this dry. All right, we're back. So uh, we've got a very pale wash down on our paper, and that should help us kind of keep a lot of light in the painting. I want to leave this foreground pretty light so we can get some kind of contrasting darker figures and shadows and that sort of thing. So first thing we're going to get started on are the, going to be these back buildings. Now I had mentioned earlier I want to keep them light but one of the biggest mistakes I see is kind of the fear of using um, really thick pigments. Uh, a lot of beginners tend to water everything down so they are going to be lighter, but I'm still going to mix up a pretty thick, thick pigment here. Um, I'm going to keep this a little warmer, and then these front buildings are going to be a little cooler. So I'm just going to make a little mark, and we'll kind of see what we think. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And it looks very dark on the paper, but again, it's watercolor. All of this is going to dry much lighter. So let's get started here. And again, I kind of want to work quickly with these. And it's okay to leave these little flecks of light. They kind of create the illusion of detail, little highlights on things. You don't want to cover everything up. So I'm going to leave a couple little, little holes in there. All right. And when I'm painting buildings, I typically, especially ones in the distance, tower type shapes, I want to paint from the body up because I want the top of the building to kind of bleed down into the body. It just creates a nice seamless transition so here we go let's let's work up here a little bit darker and I don't want it to be perfect let's see yeah that looks that looks pretty good all right and then there's kind of this circle on top I'm going to put some lavender which has got to be my favorite watercolor color yeah, we'll do that. And see how that just kind of bleeds down in there. Now I'm going to take my very small brush and go for some very dark pigment. I always like the tops of my towers and things to be fairly dark. It just kind of helps contrast them against the sky. All right, we'll add a couple little antennas and whatnot. And then we'll just do that. This whole roof is going to be painted anyways, so I'm not, not worried about it. All right. Now we're going to do this one back here, and I'm going to pretend that this one's also a little bit further. I say pretend. I think it actually is further away in the picture. But all that means is it's going to be a little lighter and a little warmer. So let's see. Yeah, just a tiny bit lighter. And the further things are away, we want to get out of the habit of trying to paint all this detail. I'm going to kind of make sure the tops of the towers are somewhat accurate. And then from there, I'm going to really back off and I'll show you in a second, let watercolor kind of paint itself. I don't, I don't want to get in the habit of, of painting little windows and things on these buildings that are so far away. It, it just creates, it's, it's hard to read for the eye. You can't see that much detail from far away. And so when you've got objects that are both close and then you have some that are far and they have the same level of detail, it just, it doesn't read well. Now, I'm going to just pull some water here, and I'm just going to kind of do that, okay? I'm going to just throw some water on there, just kind of leave it around a little bit. Yeah, I'm not, not worried about it, okay? Let's just add, and again, really all I care about is that top line of the building, so yeah, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to wet the paper. As long as our paper is wet, kind of allows us to keep working things. 
So I've got these background buildings. I've got this building, and this one may be a tad too dark. It's still wet, so I can still work on it. And how I'm going to fix that is I'm just going to take some water, and I'm just going to drop it at the very top down here. And what that'll do, I said, yeah, very top, it'll just pull some of that pigment down from the top towards the bottom and kind of lighten this up. And I'm just going to do it once and then leave it alone. Again, it's going to dry lighter, but it just looked a little too dark. Now I've got this water puddle here. I'm just going to dry that up because I'm going to start working into this roof. Okay. So now we've moved even closer, and now I'm going to pick up some serious pigment here. This is going to be a very thick, thick wash. All right, and we're going to have the top of this roof be lighter than the actual building. What I may do is we may let this roof be kind of light so we can throw some shadows and things on it. That might be kind of nice. So I'm going to mix up something a little bit more watery and a little bit warmer. I'm going to use some of that yellow ochre. All right, then let's just go for it. Yep, that looks pretty good to me. And then I'm just going to kind of let this bleed over there. Again, let watercolor do what it wants to do. You can't control it. It's, it's just got a mind of its own. We can kind of guide it around, but that's about it. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to be moving down here. This needs to get pretty dark. It's going to be the closest thing to our subjects. I'm picking up some of these neutral grays. I'm going to throw some of this red in there, some cobalt blue. I'm just trying to darken things up. And in general, I want it to be a cooler color. Let's see. That is pretty, mm, let's see here. We're going to go right along the bottom of this roof here. And notice, I'm going to leave a couple of these, these lights along the edge just to kind of give the illusion of some, I don't know, maybe some pipes or things running on top of the building. doesn't really matter. And I'm going to let the building bleed into this over here. Again, this is pretty dark. Pretty dark. Pull some lavender. And just keep working our way down, just keeping it nice and dark. Now, picked up some cobalt. Get what's less, get what's left of my burnt umber over there. How does that look? Yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, now as we get down here, I've got to remember to cut out these umbrellas. What I mean by cut out is just negatively paint around them. Huh. And this is great. This is still wet, so that building can kind of bleed over into that. All right, let's cover that up. Yeah, there we go. That looks pretty good. Now, I do, however, want to just paint under the underneaths of these, just so we give the impression of, you know, these are, in fact, umbrellas. There we go. And again, I'm leaving little gaps of light, okay? Now, let's see, I'm going to spray and get this wet again. This is looking pretty good. I love how this, this light part of this building is kind of bled into the dark. I really like that effect. So now, however, and again, I'm just going to dance this brush around a little bit like that. I need to paint this area over here. And while it's still wet, I think it's going to kind of help just soften everything up. So I want to keep this side of the building warmer. Okay. Let's see, yellow ochre, I need to refill those, those pails, but for now it's fine. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to get some dark pigment and just run along that roof right there. Perfect. And again, you'll notice I'm just moving my brush around pretty quickly, and I just want, I want to let watercolor do its thing. And I actually think, I kind of like leaving all this white in here. It, it could be windows, it could be reflections off, all sorts of things. Not worried about it. I am going to respray our work. Just keep it alive. All right. Now we are coming down to the fun stuff. Down here, 
we're going to work in all of our figures and create the illusion of detail. And one thing I'm going to do real quick is while this is still wet, I'm going to get some almost pure pigment and just run a roof line right here just to kind of create, you know, this side of the building is in shadow, but there would still be a little bit of a darker shadow underneath that roof. It needs to be pretty thick. Unfortunately, I am all out of my warm colors. I should have refilled that. All right, so here we go. Let's touch it. Looks good. We're just going to go whoop, right across. Done. All right. Now, down here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some thick pigment, right? We, uh, we like this contrast. This is a big key to making interesting watercolor is, I mean, you see how pale this first wash is, and then you see how dark our pigment is here. That contrast is kind of what creates interest and it's what creates, you know, the appearance of light. So there's a lot of empty space down here. I've got this figure here that we're going to paint. I've got these two here, but then there's got to be room for tables and chairs, all kinds of stuff. We're just going to suggest that, okay? All I'm going to do is I'm going to come under here and I'm just going to work through this very quickly like that. Okay, just I'm making random lines. I'm going to pick up some even darker pigment here and then boom, do something like that. All right, and that's the start of kind of how we're going to abstract this area. Now, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to pick up almost pure pigment and I'm going to kind of blot some things in here. And what these are going to end up being, and I'm just varying my, my color here, is these are going to end up being people. Okay, it's very hard to draw all that stuff. So if we just suggest it, now I'm going to come in here and draw some vertical lines, and maybe, maybe even like some, I'm going to draw some lines here, or maybe there's some tables or something. I'm going to draw some, there's some heads of some people that are eating over here, maybe. Draw some legs coming out. What's really important are going to be these front couple of figures that kind of draw the eyes forward. Everything else in the background we can kind of get away with. I've got a palette knife. I'm going to take and just scratch some lines in here just to kind of create the idea of some more highlights. That looks pretty good. Ooh, one thing, and I'm, I'm always kind of watching the painting right here. As this is starting to dry, I do want to add the impression of some windows. Anytime you've got a building that's in shadow or you know darker than the foreground, you don't want to come back in later and dry brush them. Um, some you know you can maybe you like that style, but I kind of want to let them bleed in a little bit. So I'm just going to come back with some darker pigment and just create the impression of some some windows here. Yeah. And again, not much. It doesn't even really need windows. Okay, that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll do the same thing up here, just a couple, just put two right there, perfect. All right, back up to our foreground here. Now, again, I'm gonna grab the lavender because it is my favorite color and I wanna paint this guy all in lavender, but I don't wanna do it right now. This is still wet and it'll cause it to bleed. I kinda want him to be sharp. These are our main subjects. They've gotta be a little bit sharper than everything else. However, oops. Back here, that doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna paint some, some faces and some things. And then let's take our paper towel and kind of maybe blot some of it out, maybe blur a little bit of it. Yeah, something like that. Just to kind of create some interest and yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay, and remember, we're also going to have this tree coming back later, which I may create some shadow kind of coming out across this foreground. Okay, I think this is about good for where I want to be. I'm going to let this dry completely, and then we're going to come back and we're going to finish everything up. All right, here we are, back for a third time, and this should be our last. This is completely dried. And except for these two little spots are a little wet, but that's okay. Uh, you'll notice everything has gotten so much lighter again. Do not be afraid to go darker in your watercolors. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see with beginners is, again, things are just light and washed out. Use the pigments that you have. So, anyways, 
let's go ahead and let's let's get some more detail in this foreground all right i'm going to come straight in here i'm going to pull pure pigment and we're going to paint this this gentleman here okay let's get some darker stuff for the legs all right and he's going to be walking kind of to the left I don't like to paint the entire leg. Just create the suggestion of legs. You know, the more you can get away with not actually painting, the better. That's that's kind of the secret of watercolors. Just suggesting things. All right. He looks pretty good. He looks dark now, but we're going to come back and put highlights on his shoulders and head later. So that should be fine. All right. And let's let's come in here and add some more some more figures and things. You know what? I'm going to put some type of a shape over there that's going to turn into a person. All right, there's one head, there's two heads right there. And again, I'm just creating the illusion of, of legs and people and what have you. Really, what, what really matters are the big shapes. Okay, and again, just creating the illusions of legs. I say illusions, I guess I mean impressions. All right, there we go. And you'll see it's starting to come together. It always can look a little strange. And for their faces, I like to use typically burnt sienna, burnt sienna light, but I'm kind of out of that right now, so I'm just mixing up some type of a warm dark color. It doesn't really matter as long as you get the shape right. The impression should read pretty clean. All right. So we've got our couple of figures up front here. Um, this one looks strange. It's got a very large head. I don't think I like that very much. Let's come in here with a paper towel and just kind of kind of clean that up just a little bit. All right. So that's all looking pretty good. I'm going to come back in here. And again, just kind of continue to build this this abstract mass and just put a couple of identifiable shapes. This guy here, and then I'll put someone over here in the back, and maybe we'll, we'll give them a red shirt or something. I want to be careful with that because it's a little bright for how neutralized everything is in this painting, but it'll dry lighter and it should be, ah, I don't know. I don't really like that. I'm going to blot it out. Oh, what next? What next? And I'm just kind of looking here. I want to be careful. I don't want to overdo the painting. I think the foreground looks pretty good. The main thing we're going to add next are going to be shadows, and that should help tie everything together. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, when you're doing shadows, I like to have the ground be a little bit more wet. Oops, sorry, bumped the camera a little bit. All right, so I'm going to use this towel to kind of cover up my figures, and then I'm just going to spray the bottom of our paper. Okay. Now, our shadow is going to want to be a little dark, right? We're looking for that contrast. All right, I've got good grays down here, so we're just going to use those. And we're going to have the sun coming a little bit left to right. Okay, so we're just going to kind of draw a little shadow there. And again, shadows are also one of those things that it's it's one and done. You just you give it a go, and you, you can't really fix them. Um, we're going to do one big shadow across there, and maybe some little things coming out of it. Yep. I think that's going to be it for now. Unfortunately, I did get this a little too wet. I'm just going to blot the bottoms of them. Okay. I think that should be fine. I got that a little too wet, if I'm being honest. Let's see here. better. I do want these shadows up front to be a little bit darker just because it's going to help kind of pull the eye forward. All right, so earlier I mentioned that we're going to keep this roof a little bit lighter, and the reason for that is so we can kind of make some shadows on the roof. So there are two, I don't know, chimneys or something, and I'm just going to take some water, and we're just going to Pull that down like that. Oh, that needs to be a little bit darker. Yep, there's some shadows there. Do 
the same thing over here, and then I'm just just creating some shadows. Those look much better than those. That's that's not dark enough. So I may come back and fix that, but there's going to be a tree over this anyway. So let's see. What else? What else? Maybe I'll make this one a little bit thicker. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. All right, and then I'm going to add some kind of little things to the tops here. I do really like the look of that. There we go, that's a little bit darker. Yeah, that's better. Okay, 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 okay. I'll be honest, I really, this got way too wet down here. I may try, if it's wet enough, I may try to blot it out. This is not something you wanna do all the time but when your watercolor is wet, it's really the only time you can save things. And luckily, that was wet enough that I could come back and fix it. This back shadow looks fine. These front ones need to be sharper. You see how sharp those chimneys are and how nice that looks? I want to try to duplicate that down here, I think. So I'm going to let this dry. It's still a little wet. In the meantime, I'm going to work on this. There's a tree that kind of cuts in over these umbrellas. So what we're going to use is I've got kind of this ratty brush. Uh, it's actually broken somehow, um, but basically I only use it for dry brushing or for the most part, I actually use it on my figures a lot. But what we're going to do is we're just going to get a warm color, almost pure pigment. And we're just going to come in here and just have a little fun with it. Right. OK, let's get a little cooler. And again, I'm just moving it around. You don't want to try to to paint a tree. I do need a little water. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna just create this tree just essentially out of scribbles. Alright. It's starting to look pretty good actually. Okay. I like the look of that yellow ochre in there. Yeah, that looks, that looks pretty good. Let's take some pure pigment and get in there really dark for a second. You kind of want to push your brush a little bit. All right, that looks pretty good. But now, I know it's a tree. It does resemble a tree, but I want to add a couple of little key elements that kind of say, hey, yeah, that's definitely a tree. I'm going to add just a, a couple of little branches and things coming out of it. You do not want to go crazy, but just enough to where the the eye kind of sees a, a lot of shapes in painting are made up of an abstract and then a key. So for example, down here at the bottom, it's abstract and then these couple of key figures are what suggest to our brain, oh, it's people, it's a, you know, an area, people are eating, whatever. Same thing with the tree here. It's a blob of dark scribbles, but then a couple of key limbs will kind of suggest to our brain, oh, that's, that's a tree. And that's a big part of painting is figuring out what to abstract and what to, what to key in. See, I think that looks much better. Just a couple of branches. All right, how's this feel down here? This is still pretty wet. I wonder if I can just kind of dampen that out a little bit. Okay. And I'm just picking up some paint. I'm just adding a couple more figures and things back behind our, our main crew here. And ooh, I've got this palette knife too, and I can kind of Draw some limb highlights in there like that. That looks nice. Maybe one going straight up. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now, let's see here if this is light enough yet to do our shadows with. Okay. We're going to go for it. Could be wrong. Just one go and done. Perfect. And again, really only you don't need a whole lot of detail in your shadows it's just a, a blob and really just put a head on there yeah that looks pretty good 
And again, they look really dark. They're going to dry much lighter. I'm going to leave. I'm very tempted to come back here and do... Uh, yeah, we're going to do it. It's too late now. Yeah, that looks good. I'm just drawing that shadow at the bottom to try and kind of sandwich in these two bright highlights in the middle. So this looks pretty good. Now I do need to add in the shadow for that tree just a little bit. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of get my brush in this sort of a shape and just kind of, I don't want to overdo it, but just kind of pat it like that. I think that actually, I think that looks pretty good. Again, I do not want to overdo it. Maybe just a little bit darker towards the back. I think that's pretty good there. I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm just looking now if there's anything else I want to do. I'm definitely going to come and add highlights. I'll tell you what, I do want to add maybe a little bit of darkness to these windows. I had mentioned earlier not to dry brush these in. I'll show you a trick where if you didn't get your, your darks correct um, when the painting was still wet, you can come back. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a very two dark spots and then just drag my finger down like that. It makes them not appear like if I just use the brush. It still gives the impression of kind of that bleeding in. Yeah, we'll just do that. It helps kind of keep everything subtle. I'm going to draw some vertical lines here in the back. This could be, I don't know, light posts, anything. Um, I'll draw another window here, another window here. Let's pull that down. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That is not, not too shabby. I'll tell you what I do want to do, though. One thing I don't like is our main figures up here, they're all very dark. Um, I'm going to make his leg a little bit. It's too long. Um, the one thing I want to do is I want to try to lighten up one of these figures. And we're going to do this one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that ratty brush, get all the paint off of it. Oops, dropped it. Get all the paint off there. And I'm going to come back and just put some water on this body here and then grab my paper towel and blot it out and it should just just lighten him up a little bit yeah that looks that looks better to me darken his legs back up i just wanted there to be just a little bit of a a darker uh excuse me a lighter a lighter shape in this in this front here it's just a little too dark everything was looking a little bit uh I don't know, monochromatic. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to add in our highlights. Give me just one second. I gotta step off camera and grab my gouache. All right, final step. I have got some white titanium gouache and I just use this just to add some highlights. You could use, if you've got uh, white titanium, Chinese white watercolor as well, um, the gouache just tends to last a little longer, and so I, I like to use it. All right, and all I'm doing is I'm just adding some highlights on the head and shoulders here of, of some of our people. You do want to try to kind of vary it a little bit. Like you don't want to use the same pattern for everyone, but it really helps bring out people from the darkness like that and like this figure here. This guy here, his head's already dark and it's surrounded by light, so I'm just going to put one on the shoulder. And then I'm going to add a, you know, a vertical line. And I don't know, maybe a, something there. And just kind of, again, just abstracting a little bit of stuff. Could be highlights on tables. Who knows? Who knows? Okay. And then, so you do not want to get carried away. Maybe just a little highlight on this roof. Maybe one umbrella. 
I think that's it. I think that is it. I'm going to sign it, pull the tape off, and we're going to be all done. Um, I do think it's important, and I do this after all of my paintings, even if you think it's you know the best one you've ever done, you should obviously enjoy it, but take a second and look and see where did you possibly stray away a little bit from your goals or where where could you have done things a little bit better just to keep it in your mind so that next time you might be able to change things all right let's pull the tape off oops it's stuck down there let's do this one All right, let's get this guy. All right, overall, I'm pretty pleased with the painting. A couple of things. One, I do think this building, it got just a little bit too dark because it looks like it's right up against this roof. And I wish I could have pushed it back just a little bit more. Um, I do wish maybe that this building would have been scooted to the right a little bit more so I could have room to do another uh, chimney and shadow. I, I just really like that effect on the tops of buildings. Other than that, though, this tree shadow could be a little bit darker, but you know I'm, I'm not going to go back and mess with it. I'll just kind of remember that for next time. Maybe this is a little too dark. I actually can damp that out a little bit. That's the hardest part in watercolors is getting your tones correct. The colors don't matter as much. I mean, this building almost looks purple, but it works because the tone is correct in reference to the light and darkness around everything else. Hardest part is getting those tones right. I think this shadow should have been darker. This one, a hair lighter. But overall, very pleased. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, if you like what you saw, please consider subscribing and liking the video. It helps me get this content out to more people. So thanks again and keep on painting.